What's up, everybody? Um, happy Monday, finally. Uh, the weekend is over. Just a few days away from Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video short and sweet. Um, I love today's episode. I'm starting to really like the Monday episodes. Because like I said before, normally the episodes after Cliffhanger Friday are not that good. But today was good. Yeah, I loved the scenes with Sam and AJ and Danny. I loved it. It blew me away. Um, I don't know about y'all, about any of y'all out there, but I, I could see the chemistry between Sean Keenan and Kelly Monaco. You know, AJ and Sam, the chemistry between them. I mean, it ain't like Jason and Sam chemistry, but damn. They got some chemistry. AJ and CM, I, I don't know if I'm like, you know, if they ever get into a relationship. I don't know how I would feel about that, though, because. Like, would anybody see it as a betrayal to Jason? I'm not sure how I would view it. You know what I'm saying? But I would love AJ and CM better than AJ. I mean, better than CM and John McBain. I would like her hooking up with AJ better than her and John. I just don't like her with John because, for one, he ain't got no personality. AJ got more of a personality than John do. And I could see great things between her and AJ. But anyway, um, I love their scenes together. I, I kind of don't agree with Sam, though. When she, you know, say how Jason would feel or what he would say, you know, to AJ if Jason was around, I don't agree with her. I think AJ and Jason would really bury the hatchet if Jason was here today. I think he would bury the hatchet with AJ. I think Jason would definitely do that because a couple years ago, Jason even said back in the day he would do a lot of things differently concerning AJ and Michael. I don't. I, I believe Jason would, would have done things differently. I believe Jason would have, you know, show some love towards AJ because growing up they really did have a great brother brother relationship growing up they really did they had a great sibling relationship growing up they were real close back in the 90s and stuff like that they were real close before Billy Warlock came AJ and Jason were actually close so they really did love each other and I believe Jason even though after everything that AJ did to him and stuff like that Jason still loved AJ and then AJ still loved Jason. There's no question about that. I didn't agree with Sam when she said AJ should be in prison. I hate when everybody keeps saying AJ should be, should be in prison. What the fuck? I'm going to say this again. If AJ should be in prison, God damn it, Carly should be in prison. Sonny should be in prison. Sam herself should be in prison. And Luke should be in prison. A lot of people in Port Charles should be in prison. Dante should be in prison too. But here's why I say that. Sam used to be a con artist before she came to Port Charles. You know, she used to marry a bunch of wealthy men and, you know, steal their money. Um, here's, here's the thing about that. Being a con artist is against the law as well. You're swindling money out of people. That's extortion. You're taking money from people. So Sam should have went to jail, too, if she want to be critical about it. I mean, seriously. I mean, you want to get into that. I love Sam. Don't get me wrong, but... I mean, come on now. If you want to say he should be in prison, so should you. Luke should be in prison, too, because, I mean, come on. He's a jewel thief. He's a diamond thief. He's a con artist. He should. He's an impersonator. He impersonates people of authority, like cops, doctors. You can go to jail for that. I'm sure that's against the law. So Dante should go to prison because five years ago when he met Brenda, she shot the Vulcan son, and Dante covered it up. That's against the law. That's a crime. And he purged he purged he purged himself on the stand when he testified he shot himself and Sonny didn't shoot him. That's perjury. You can be charged too. Here that's my point. If AJ go to jail, they should go to jail. I'm just saying. Um, but I'm glad that, you know, Sam warmed up to AJ. You know, they started talking and she allowed him to see Danny. You know, she was about to allow him to hold Danny before Dante barraged his punk ass up in here. But, um, I could definitely see AJ with Sam. I could see it. I would love that. 
I don't know about y'all, but I would love it. It's better. I think it's way better than her and John McBain. I think it's way better. Um. Anyway, I just think it's way better. That's my point about it. Um. Um. Who should I talk about? Okay. Tracy. My goodness. Tracy. I just wish Monica would just throw that bitch out, please. But I love Tracy, though. She's just funny sometimes. Like, But in this episode, she was just so vindictive. Like, she just got on my nerves. Um, From what I read in the spoilers, apparently after Edward's funeral, when they do the will reading, I heard it was going to be some funny shit that's going to happen in that will. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure it, that will read it will not go Tracy's way. I'm sure. I don't know who he going to leave ELQ to or it'd be, you know, it'd be funny if Sky gets ELQ. I would die if she got ELQ or Monica. I would die, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to go Tracy's way. Dante got on my fucking nerves when he went into quarter main mansion. Like he seriously annoyed me. How he's so hypocritical. Like, he is so self-righteous. No wonder Sonny is his father. Like, seriously, yo. He is just so hypocritical. It don't make no fucking sense. He sit there and say, Michael shouldn't get involved in this. Michael shouldn't be trying to protect AJ. Correct me if I'm wrong, but two years ago, Sonny shot Dante point blank in the chest. Damn near killed him. His own son. Dante got on a witness stand and purged himself and lied and said he shot himself. And he did all that to protect Sonny. Dante threw Michael under the bus, put him in Pettenville to protect Sonny. And you say Michael shouldn't protect AJ? AJ's his father, whether anybody like it or not. That's his father. And I'm glad Michael's standing by his side. Because how many times has Sonny done wrong things and Michael still stood by his side? Sonny tampered with Jax's plane last year. Made the plane crash down. Everybody thought Jax was dead. Michael still stood by Sonny's side. While everybody else turned their back on him, Michael stood by his side. Come on now. Michael ain't even... Sonny not even his biological father. Sonny's done way worse things than AJ. And yet Michael stood by his side. Come on now. It don't really surprise me that Michael would stand by AJ. It don't surprise me, and I love it. Um, Tracy need to get her ass smacked the fuck down because she getting on my nerves. Um, Lulu and Dante, I don't know what it is. I kind of agree with everybody who's saying that they're boring in a way, like their relationship is kind of boring right now. I think it is. The only time I really like Dante and Lulu is when some drama was going on in their relationship. That's the only time I really liked it. Because, it, you know, it, it brought something new to their relationship. And I love that. But now that they all, you know, lovey-dovey, trying to have a baby, it's kind of corny and boring. Like, this is soaps. We we live for the drama on soap operas. What is the point of watching a soap if there ain't no good drama? I mean, come on. Everybody marriage got drama in it. You gotta have some drama in a relationship and some marriage. You gotta do it. I mean, otherwise you just dry and bored. Their relationship is dry right now. Like seriously, hook Dante up with some woman. I thought him and um whatever happened to Padilla, um Padilla, Detective Padilla. Whatever happened to her? I thought they were really gonna throw her in Dante and Lulu marriage. I thought they would, but they dropped the ball on that relationship. It ain't too late. I think they could get her back. I don't know if she off the show or if she on the show. I don't know. She was a good looking woman, I'll tell you that much. But they really do need to do something with Dante and Lulu. Like, do something, please. Um, okay. Maxie. Can you be any more wishy washy and manipulative? I think her and Spinelli kind of brought up some good points, though, because Maxie was like, is Spinelli really with Ellie out of obligation? Like, are you doing this just not to hurt her feelings? That's a good question, because I would really like to know. Like, is he really staying with Ellie just not to hurt her feelings because of that story that she told him about her ex-boyfriend and how she can't go through another big breakup? That's a good point. Like, you know what I mean? It really is a good point. But Spinelli brought up a damn good point about how... Um, 
Maxie, like would like say if he chose Maxie, he brought up a good point. Would she still want him a year from now? Dad brought up a good point because I used to think the same thing when I thought about I thought about that all weekend since I watched Friday's episode. Would she still love Spinelli a year from now, maybe a month from now, a couple weeks from now? Like, would she still want him? Or is this just her wanting him because he got somebody? You know how women do whenever a man got a relationship. That's when the women want him. And the same goes for women. Like whenever a woman is in a relationship, that's when the guy wants her. You know, it's, it's that type of thing. And, you know, I just think that Maxie needs to back off. She had the nerve to say, well, Ellie is not her that's that's a good thing. I'm glad Ellie is nothing like um, Maxie. Because Ellie is attentive. Like, she's very attentive to Spinelli's needs. She just like him. They, they, they connect on the same things because they love the same damn things. And that's what I like about their relationship. It's unique. Um, they're kind of dorky in a good way. And I love that about them. They're, they're the fun comic relief couple of the show. He has really nothing in common with Maxie absolutely nothing she's selfish she is a user she's she's a cheater she's a liar she plays way too many games she's manipulative vindictive those are just all the things have probably half the things about Maxie that turns a guy off from her she just rude like she don't strike me as the type of person that's loving and caring she's just all about her 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 that's all she cares about. It's that me, 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 me type shit. That's all she gives a fuck about. And I think Spinelli could do a lot better than that because of the type of guy he is. Spinelli is a kind-hearted guy, you know, fun-loving. He loves to do things for people. And she just takes him for granted. And that's what I hate about Maxie. Like, you don't miss the water until the well run, uh, run dry. Something like that. You know, and now that her man is gone, she want him back. Because she don't know what she missing. Now she know what she missing. He was a good guy to her. And she took all of that for granted. And now she's getting exactly what she deserves. So my advice to Maxie is move on. Find you something new in life. You know, find a new chapter in life because you and Spinelli are done for the for the time being. Because now she gets to see that the grass is the grass greener on the other side. And I'm happy for Spinelli. He's moving on. He got a good girl. And Maxie sitting there talking about, well, what if y'all get married and her name is Ellie Spinelli, Mrs. Ellie Spinelli. I'm like, who cares if the name sounds crazy or whatever like that? Who cares? Like, I'm happy for, for Spinelli. He finally found somebody who's down for him and who got his back, who doesn't take him for granted, who likes the same things, you know, the same interests that he likes. Who could connect with him on his level he finally found that and it's not in max my thing about it is i do believe that he still loved maxi but i don't really kind of get the thing that he's in love with her i think he used to be infatuated with her you know he used to put her on a pedestal but um he finally found somebody that's for him and i'm happy for him and i'm glad he made the decision to be with ellie and i hope you know, he his intentions with Ellie are good and that he's not just with her because he don't want to break her heart. I would hate to see her get hurt because she is a nice woman. And I'm glad. And you want to know what tells me that he really do like Ellie is because how he kept correcting Maxie whenever she kept calling Ellie that girl. That sounded so like Brenda. You know how Brenda used to always call Carly that girl? I hated that. Bitch, she got a name. The fuck? Call people by their name. Don't be calling them that girl. And for one, she ain't no girl. She's a grown-ass woman. Like, seriously, can you be any more disrespectful? Like, that's just rude. Um. Anyway. Good luck to Spinelli, Ellie, Maxie. Go get your life. Um. <laughs> um. Olivia. This Olivia phase on crap. So how would this work? If Anna slept with Faison, if she were to sleep with Faison, wouldn't she notice that mass right here? Like when they sleep together, like this part, wouldn't she notice that? I'm sure. Um, and I think she got good instincts because she was like Duke felt different. And I think that's her instincts kicking in. She should always listen to her instincts. They're never wrong. It, everybody should do that. Listen to your instincts because you're never wrong. Go with your gut feeling. She obviously feel that he's different. 
So I'm like, that's your instincts right there. I think things with Faison is about to get deadly. I think they really are because like Robert said, if she don't hook, if if he don't get Anna on his timetable, he may try to force Anna to get with him. You know, he may try to force it. And I could tell by the way he threw that pic, that wedding picture down and broke it. He's starting to get a little anxious because she's not falling into his arms as quickly as he thought she would. He's doing everything on a times table. So I think things are about to turn deadly. Um, finally, Elizabeth is doing something useful. She's using her good qualities for good, her artistic side, because I really do like that picture that she drew a face on. I think it was a nice picture, even though I don't like the bitch. But, you know, I'm never going to like her. Olivia, I love these visions. She reminds me so much of Madame Delphina from One Life to Live. You know, the big bitch. Um, she reminds me so much of her, like these damn visions that come true. Cause remember Madame Delphina, Madame Delphina, she predicted that whole prison break thing that happened on general hospital last year, you know, in the finale, she predicted it. So, you know, she came, she was right. And she predicted that Gigi was still alive. So I think that's the direction that they're trying to go in with Olivia's character, you know, try to bring something new to her. Cause I always wanted Olivia to be you know, have a main role on General Hospital instead of just the mother of Dante. That sour puss. He's starting to turn into Sonny Jr. and I'm not liking it, bastard. Getting on my nerves with his little indecisive ass. Um. Anyway, today's episode, fucking great. I loved every second of it. Tomorrow's episode, I already know I'm going to talk mad shit about Sonny and Carly tomorrow, so be ready for that because I already know the gloves are coming off. Oh, I didn't say anything about little Danny. I love that little boy. I swear. They picked the best baby to be Sam and Jason's son. I swear. I cannot wait until. I hope this show lasts a couple years down the road so I can see him growing up. Because I always wonder how Danny is going to turn out. I always wonder. Like, will he be a doctor or the next CEO of ELQ? I would love to see it. I would love it. I know he's going to definitely have Jason personality, I think, or maybe Sam's. Um. Anyway. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Have a great day. I think tomorrow is the final episode till after Thanksgiving, I think. So I'll check, but I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great day.